Yeah, he sort of it sounds sort of like an alien uh, concept these days, and obviously you talk, you highlighted that a bit that it was alien from this broken systems we're using. Exactly, yeah. so it is alien. <laughs> Actually, I'm very happy that you know people imagine the future. We are creating it, and we're doing it in a very practical way. The and, way and uh, oh, sorry, keep no, going. no, no, keep going. <laughs> No, the way we see the world is that it shouldn't be an effort of one company. We looked uh, at our company as a movement, as a possibility for humanity to come together to solve one of the biggest problems. And uh, we did a call to action. We said, we don't have all the answer. If you know how to help us, join the team. And what happened is magic. We have more than 900 people from 42 countries. They are working. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of them full-time, some of them are retired scientists, some of them are working on the top companies in the world, NASA, SpaceX, Tesla, Boeing, Aerospace, Lockheed Martin, MIT, Stanford. And it's, it's, and it's all just graphics and vaporware, right? This is, this is, the, <laughs> this is, the, this is the, 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 I'm sure what you get a lot, right? You get people thinking it's not real, it's not. So you just announced, the breaking news is that you just announced the first full-scale project. How about that? Right? And, and vaporware? To, to lose, to lose, just within Toulouse, or what is the... So right now, this first full-scale Hyperloop that we are starting to construct is the first example of a real Hyperloop. Mm -hmm. The dimension, the uh, civil construction that we will be applying, all the technique of air locking, safety, all the sensor in the communication, everything will be tested in that, uh, in, in that uh, track. So I think the most important thing to understand of what we are doing is that we are putting together technology that we're existing and we are doing it in a very innovative way. In some part of the Hyperloop, we've had to acquire technologies and then develop uh, new solutions for that because uh, they were um, a, a good technologies, but has to be integrated in a different way. So, and this first project, uh, at this stage, where's the where's the funding coming from for this? Uh... This stage, we uh, have had a contribution for more than 100 million. Uh, me and my partners put some money at the beginning and then we increased but the most important thing is not the money it's about the tools the engineering time and the uh, assets that we need to build it and so are a lot of a lot of the the leading staff also sort of putting in sweat like you know the tesla model has exactly. been underpaid quote but for for advancing a mission and for you know the future prospects exactly right? yeah. and that's the key to actually build this new generation of technologies now we introduce to the world a new way to uh, to look at companies you don't need to raise money anymore you need to raise tools you still assets. raise quite a bit of money <laughs> well, <laughs> but, yes, but, but that but, wasn't the most important thing yeah, you know okay the, we didn't start it from the money we yeah. started for the brain yes yeah. and, and that's the first time that yeah. a project like this comes to life yeah. in this such a, a innovative way and so you also highlighted Abu Dhabi I've spent a lot of time in Abu Dhabi and Dubai and I love the leadership down there the vision Amazing. the 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 goal to do something you know, full, fully, uh, you, you, you talked about the roadblock a minute ago that you had with California where you got the, the, the leasing permit, you said first, but then after a few years ran into a different permitting yes. branch that killed, sort of killed the project. Exactly. Uh, so I think the reality is that when you work with countries like Abu Dhabi, they really challenge you. That's mm -hmm. not a place where it's easy to work with because yeah. they have the best engineers in the planet that actually want answers. And it's not only about technology, it's about what does happen in Abu Dhabi when the Hyperloop is built? What is the social impact? What is the financials? What is the people moved, the zoning? Mm -hmm. What happens when you have two new metro lines, one light rail and one airport? And these are questions that... Uh, and they come at it from us. a from a vision perspective, not a paperwork perspective. Exactly. It's not about filling out all the right paperwork and it's seeing about what... It's about the people that have having a vision and wanting to understand, is this really going to be a compelling project that serves a vision that we want or... Exactly. Yeah. So we've had to work, for example, with their STEAM model, that it's a very complex algorithm that actually looks at all the 
flu flow of passengers based on the new infrastructure that you build. Okay. And that was incredible. We've had the uh, amazing opportunity to work with Atkins, our uh, partner, and uh, we've had almost 100 scientists working in that project for six months. Now that we are ready to announce the results, uh, you will see. So, so this uh, is what so you're announcing tomorrow? or? Or this is, <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can, <laughs> come on, we give, give us a little bit of a scoop here. No? <laughs> we got a scoop already, I know, I want, I'm greedy, I'm greedy, I want five, <laughs> five scoops. What's your plan next year? No, but, uh, but basically you, you, you've had a, a lot of initial interest there and it's just they've carried it for, forward strongly, correct? Yes. Yeah. And uh, same with Toulouse, you had initial... Yes, and this was another very, very good uh, uh, government that we partnered with because uh, um, there have been a lot of talk and you journalists like to talk and you know, what happened to Toulouse? We announced, we realized uh -huh. we were working really fast if you think that we have signed a deal a couple of months mm -hmm. ago and now we are going into construction. So you have to be proud of your government because they, they have putting their actions where their mouth are and there's not a lot of places in the world that this and, happens. And you mentioned a minute ago to another uh, journalist or, or I'm not sure who that was about uh, you didn't initially expect Europe would be because <laughs> you think of Europe, you think of permitting, you think of old systems, you think of inertia, you think of. I'm uh, not saying they. But it actually, this is the first place because yes. of uh, them having again a vision or. Them having a vision and actually supporting with concrete actions innovative company like ours. It wasn't easy to bring us here. And you said the economic, the, the sort of the industrial economic area. It was quite conducive to, to what you're doing. So when we analyzed the possible uh, um, places to build the first one, uh, we have a request from 140 countries. So Toulouse wasn't in the top of the list because imagine, for the reason that you said, you are very skeptical to have the first one in Europe. But in reality, when a government is capable of actually um, pushing forward the innovation like France. France is one of the biggest investors in research and development in mm -hmm. the planet. Mm -hmm. So this is creating an ecosystem that is fundamental for innovation to come to life. And Hyperloop is a, an example. I'm not saying we have tackled all the issue. I'm saying they are pushing us and giving us the tools to actually make this happen. I don't. Uh, there will be other challenges, there will be you know, a lot of things that uh, uh, can be in the middle, but the initial uh, sprint was amazing. So I think you probably won't give us many more leaks out of Abu Dhabi or, or Toulouse, but you give us an understanding of why these places are leading with you and why, you're, why you are having great quick progress uh, in these areas. Tomorrow you'll be in Malaysia, I understand. Yes. A slow plane, well, slow plane flight. Yes, not for, <laughs> not the most. But, but, but uh, I'm coming from Seoul. <laughs> wow! So you go from Seoul to to Paris to Malaysia. And you feel my pain, right? Yeah, I can uh, believe me. I, yeah. I I'm I'm happy that I'm sure you're you've got some good seating uh, where you can lay down. Hopefully, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, can you give much insight into other regions where you have a strong focus right now outside of Absolutely. Abu Dhabi and Toulouse? As you probably read in the news, we signed with India, the government to Andhra Pradesh. In India, I've been meeting the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Transport, Niti Gadgari. Another place you don't think of when you think of paperwork and bureaucracy, right? Right. <laughs> no. But uh, India now has, uh, in, is in a moment of very big decisions. Uh, they can stay in the uh, 20th century with 80% uh, of the rolling stock that are obsolete and a disaster happening every month there, uh, or embrace uh, innovation and actually trying to find a real solution. And that's what Modi did. It actually, actually pushed us. Uh, I've been in Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Jharkhand, Talangana, Goa, and uh, the result uh, was astonishing. We signed five deals and actually we have been able to go into an um, agreement with the government of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, we analyzed in this first feasibility study, if it's positive, we'll build 30 kilometers of full-scale hyperloop in Andhra Pradesh. So it's very exciting. It's very quick. I mean, people, of course, today, people expect it to happen like that. Yeah. Snap your fingers and it's done, right? But it's, right. Uh, it's amazing the, the scale of work that you have, have already completed in such a short time. 
Uh, but you. Uh, you know, we, we of course, I think Clean Technica, uh, Clean Technica, thanks you very much for this exclusive. Of course, I'm sure a lot of our readers and and writers, you know, we we try to have a healthy skepticism, but we're very attached to finding the people with the vision who make who break down barriers and make make solutions happen. And it seemed like you you fit that that premier crowd and uh, what you're doing is amazing thank you and be skeptical it's uh, yeah. it's okay yeah. to be skeptical <laughs> but tr please uh, try to be skeptical in uh, in the right way try don't, to go don't be skeptical for the sake of for skepticism, the sake of skepticism. <laughs> yeah. because i read yeah. articles oh, I or know. videos that are ridiculous there's no science behind it what i can guarantee you is that we are an open platform we want criticism we want people that tell us what to improve, what to uh, integrate. And uh, unfortunately, the, the reality is that, uh, you know, we are now a, a version number one. But I'm and, and I'm sure you get that from leaders in Abu Dhabi, from leaders in France, from, what, you know, before they commit to something. So uh, it's crazy. It, 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 seems a, it seems a little bit ridiculous to assume that you're not getting that at a high level. Uh, but. Of course, it's going to be a challenge. Nobody's going to say it's going to be that easy, but we haven't solved but it's a serious. But we are in the moment where we can build the version one, yeah. and this is an historical moment, and we need to do it. So, congratulations and thank you one more time. Thank you.